All right, so first, we're going to start off by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakadaz. That's Yahweh, giving the true name of our Heavenly Father in Hebrew, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakadaz. And um, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for being us his truth. Honor to the brothers that's pushing his truth. Risking their life and freedom to, uh, to do so. Shalom to the hopeful we leg. The one third of our people that's returning back to the Lord so that he will have mercy on them in this time of judgment. All right, so this live lesson, it's not going to be a live recording, but I'm going to record, do a screen recording so we can share the screen. And also, we're going to continue where we left off at in Matthew chapter 9 for our teachings of Yahweh Shai. Because we're going to bring forth stuff that the Christian church didn't teach, that they left out, and that they taught incorrectly. It's Juneteenth out here, which is the reason why I'm doing the lesson this way. Bunch of people out, bunch of music. Juneteenth is supposed to be a white celebration. Sorry, Juneteenth is supposed to be a Negro celebration. And who do we see out here? We see these Edomites all over the place. So we can't catch a break. We can't have nothing for ourselves. It's supposed to be our holiday, and they trying to steal it. That's why they set up shop out here. Anything we have, they won't part in. But the stuff they have, we can't take part in. That's the pride of these, that's the pride of these Edomites. But Juneteenth ain't nothing anyway. And my mama said it. <clears throat> they, they, you, uh, you throw a dog a bone just to satisfy him for a little minute. But nothing ain't gonna change. Nobody got a pay day off. Nobody got a day off. Negroes ain't getting no benefits for the day. It's just foolishness. It's just something to make black people spend money, to make them go party, smoke and drink, to keep them in further confusion. Just like all these other holidays. True reparations and true um, exaltment is going to come from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Now, the day of the Lord, that's the real Juneteenth. That's when all Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans across the world are going to be freed of this captivity. And even beyond this captivity, this oppression. Now, everybody out here scattered throughout the park. People got their tents, their chairs. I got my chair. So let's see if some, anybody come see what I got going on. We got our posters and our illustrations out. So, you know, praying I get some action today. We got these Edomites to the right of me, about 50 feet away. I bet you they be the first ones curious about what I got going on. Oh, and uh, heads up, um, I've been out of the loop <clears throat> on sort of what's been going on. I don't have a phone. I'm going, it's going on about two weeks with no phone. Two weeks with no phone has been really peaceful, <clears throat> but I'm not able to keep up what's going on in the news and to keep up with my brother's lessons. I know my cousin Torrance got a lesson I got to check out, but I should have one soon, you know, Lord willing. But phone or no phone, we're going to keep pushing. <clears throat> and again, I pray y'all can hear me over the music. That's why I'm sitting down in my chair. My mom got me under some trees so we can have some shade so the computer don't get too hot. Uh, but keep in mind that time is very short. And what time is that? The time of repentance. <clears throat> and with that being said, let me get a... Uh, we're going to get First Peter chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, <clears throat> this final generation here, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shoot forth praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And what's that darkness? That's the misinformation, lies, and deceit from the world that Esau pushed out. So the Lord called us out of this confusion into this marvelous light. 
That would be the confusion. How you doing? And that, uh, and this darkness would be the confusion pushed out by the white man. And this light would be the truth of all things, starting with the Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scripture exposes all, tells all, and makes sense of all. So if the Lord gave you any amount of this wisdom, rather you got a great understanding of the scriptures or a very all a very small understanding of the scriptures. Any understanding is better than no understanding. So if you have any understanding, that's the Lord calling you out of this darkness, the darkness of the world pushed by Esau. And now you in this marvelous light. You stepped into the light. Rather you got a great understanding or a very small understanding. Just knowing who you are and knowing the true name. That's a small understanding, but that's you being caught into this marvelous life. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Yahweh. And we wasn't a people, we wasn't a people of the Lord previously. Why is that? Because he was in this darkness and this confusion, not knowing who we are, that we're the Lord shows the people, knowing his true name, having no wisdom of the Bible. But now that we got this wisdom of the Bible, coming back to the understanding of who we are, that's us being called into this marvelous light, which had not obtained mercy, but now have attained mercy. Because previously, we didn't have mercy. We weren't eligible for mercy as a people, but now we're eligible for mercy. And how was that? Because we are now in this marvelous light. The Lord called us to the light. So now we can have mercy. Because as long as we was wrapped up in this confusion, this misinformation, lies, and deceit pushed by the white man, we weren't eligible for mercy. So like we said before, you got any understanding, any amount of understanding, whether it be small or great, even the minimum understanding, now you're eligible to obtain mercy. And now that we got getting our understanding back of all things, beginning with the Holy Scriptures, that's the beginning of our mercy. Now that we got even a small amount of understanding, now we're eligible for mercy. And now that we understand the scriptures, we're eligible for mercy, and we understand that the scriptures is a warning for that great and terrible day, the day of the Lord's return. But before the Lord return, once we will receive this wisdom, in which we will receive our mercy, the Lord will send a warning. And that's the Bible in its entirety. Because it all talk about that day. And that's why when we hit Amos 8 and 11, <clears throat> it reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So the days come <clears throat> that there's going to be a shortage of hearing these teachings. The Bible is going to be here forever. It's not going to be like the book of Eli, you know, where there's going to be no Bibles. You know, Esau, in this Esau, you know, sloppy Joe Biden, in his campaign, he said that he would take our guns and take our Bibles. He can take our guns, but the Lord not going to ever let them do away with the Bibles. They might take a, a small frack. They might take a, a, a chunk of the Bibles, but the elect, the one third, we're going to have this knowledge inside of us. It's sealed in our spirit, sealed in our minds. So even if they take the Bible, we know the Bible. Not mean that we know it word for word, but we understand that it's a warning for the Lord's people to get us out of here when the destruction comes. And that those who make it out of here, they're going to be eligible for the kingdom and everlasting life. Now the Lord said, behold, the days come that he will send a famine, you know, not of bread or water. A famine of bread, meaning food and water is going to come. It's going to be the greatest famine. Uh known to man but along with that famine there's going to be a lack of these teachings meaning they're going to do away with this truth they're going to put it off the internet and then with no food and water what you think people are going to do people are going to be eating each other riding purging cannibalism so we're not going to be able to be out in public teaching like many brothers are today and this is set the record straight just because juneteenth is a negro holiday it's still wickedness because Esau created the holiday. Like my mama said, Esau throwing you dogs a bone and y'all taken by it. <clears throat> but yeah, there's going to be a famine of the Lord's teachings. And 
and and and and that's a scary thing because the Lord called us out of darkness into this marvelous light with the scriptures. So the white man Esau gonna try to get rid of not the scriptures, but get rid of the teachings of the scriptures. Um, and they're gonna try to get rid of the teachings, uh, which is the way we was called out of darkness. Because it's these teachings, the true understanding, that makes us eligible to obtain mercy. Because without these teachings, the correct teachings, you will never be eligible for mercy. But we attained it with the correct teachings, with the correct breakdown. So, this, since these mercies, <clears throat> this mercy, it begins with the scriptures. He's going to try to get rid of the, the teaching of the scriptures. And then when the, when the teaching of the scriptures is pulled back, that's the Lord, he done warning the people. Because this is all, uh, the Lord set, set these teachers up strategically all over the earth to warn the people. That's why when we continue, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. This wandering from sea to sea, that means they're going to be surfing the net. And it says they shall run to and fro, meaning they're going to be running these search engines. They're going to be surfing the net, running these search engines, looking for this truth, trying to get this understanding. But it's going to be too late when the Lord pulls this truth back. And it's going to be pulled back by a cyber attack, a nationwide blackout, these power outages. When the power outages start happening, which, by the way, they already started happening, that's the doors of repentance closing. Because, yeah, whoever listening right now, um, they're, eligible, they're, they're able to access this truth. They're able to uh, click on the video. Clicking on your video, that's you listening to the warning. But somewhere out there, there's a power outage, and people can't click on these videos. So that means time is getting closer and closer. Uh, certain people can access this truth, certain people can't. And it's going to be rolling blackouts. I mean, the blackouts going to be random. Random to us, but they're going to be throughout America and throughout the world. But eventually, it's going to be a nationwide blackout. And that's going to be the end of this warning. The Lord is going to act on his judgments. So this is the, this is the last call of scripture. That a famine of the word is coming. And that's why when we hit Isaiah 55 and 6, this is another last call of scripture. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. You mainly find the Lord on the internet, where you find everything else at, where you find jobs, where you find foolishness. You can also find the Lord and find his truth on the internet. Call ye upon him while he is there. I'm sorry, uh, man, do, doing like a, a live lesson. I'll be out here teaching the oh, truth no. of the Bible. Okay. Would you be considered like Hispanic, Mexican? I would be considered Hispanic. Okay, I got I got a, a, a chart over here. Okay. You be part of the 12 tribes of Israel, nice. uh, you and your children, uh -huh. and that would make us the Lord's chosen people. Uh -huh. Like when you read the Bible, you're not gonna find black, African-American or Mexican yeah. or Native Americans. Uh -huh. You're gonna find the names to the right. Oh. And that's what the Lord called us. Oh, wow. I gotta call it like it is, the white man, the people in power. He took all the names that the Lord gave us and changed them to this over here on the left. So when we read the Bible, we can't identify with it. It's kind of like, it makes it confusing. It makes it confusing. Oh, me, take many pictures as you want. I'm gonna give you my, my card too for my YouTube channel. Yeah, I'll check it out for sure, because I like to listen to YouTube uh, stuff while I'm, uh, while I'm working. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I like to listen to YouTube while I'm working. But anything about, thing they don't teach about Mexicans, that's how my kids, because uh -huh. they see Mexicans in all colors, and I say, yeah, because we all colors, like, if, if they're more white, they got more Spanish or teen. If mm -hmm. they were my color, because we have, we have African ancestors. Oh, know, yeah. Because they didn't outline in Mexico. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. Oh, okay, yeah. So, like, you might have Asian, you might have uh, Asian, <clears throat> Spanish or teen, Native American, and then other stuff, you know. Are you? It just depends on the amount. Yep, and that's, uh. The amount that, of, yeah. That proves that we relatives, Negroes oh, and Hispanics. Absolutely. Cause we go back to Jacob, uh -huh. which is which is Israel. We we the children of Israel. So, uh -huh. way back to the Bible days, we got the same great 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 grandfather. Uh -huh. and then um, so pretty much, um, 
as we see, America is falling. Yeah. You see all the shootings, the stock market crashing. Yeah. Uh, the the warehouse is going empty. Uh -huh. The store is going empty. So the Lord is attacking America like He attacked Egypt. Uh -huh. You know, in Egypt, when the Lord attacked it, He came back for His people. Yeah. We the Lord's people. Yeah. And this America is the same Egypt. That's why we got the pyramid on the back of the dollar right here. Then you know this is a new Egypt. Uh -huh. Just like the Lord attacked Egypt, he attacked in America before he comes back for his people once again. Uh -huh. And this would be like the true name of the Lord. It's Yahweh. Um, and his son name would be Yahweh Shai. Okay. Because Jesus, Jehovah, is just not it. The Lord only has one name. And pretty much the people who the Lord will save, uh, those people will have his true name. Because, you know, when all hell break loose, everybody's going to be screaming Jesus. Yeah. None of them ain't going to make it. Because they're not going to know Nope. So, I was in, a, when I was in high school, I was in all honors classes. And, you know, when you're in honors classes, mm -hmm. you've got an expectation that other people are like you and that they learn outside of school, not just in school. And that's oh, yeah. That's how you met it that way. You know, it's always like that. And I mentioned in my in my history honors classes that Jesus wasn't white. Oh, yeah. And everyone in my class, all white people, everyone in my class, they're up with. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yep. you know, yeah, he is. You know, like, it's impossible. Like, there's no white people there. How could he be white? You know? <clears throat> yep. And then the teacher, they're like, Mr. Family, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, he's not white. So I see, you know, I see. Like, yeah. And it was crazy to me. And that was really a learning moment to me. Because I'm here thinking we're all like more enlightened people. That's why we're in these classes, you know. And yep. No, they still, they weren't. <clears throat> and it just, it threw me back how. How much they argued it, you know what I'm saying? Like even when the teacher said it, people still didn't want to hear. It. That yeah, that that shows that there's different forms of enlightenment. There's a a worldly enlightenment. There's a spiritual enlightenment. You yeah, have the spiritual absolutely. enlightenment, and uh, it really shows inside of people's hearts when you say yeah. that the, the Messiah was a black man. Yeah. It brings out the demons in people. Yeah. It's like okay, if he was black, if he's a lord, you should still love him the same, right? Yeah. Well, you find out he's black now, it's a problem. Yeah. That that shows the hypocrisy, that, the hypocrisy in these people. Oh, yeah. It's the hypocrisy that hurts, man. I, I was thinking about that today. I, I think about that daily, man. Yeah, because uh, the scriptures say what he looked like. Yeah. Yeah, right it says there. what he looked like. And then history tells you there's no, no absolute. Oh. Now, people argue on whether he was black or whether he was, uh, like, was it from India or whatever? People argue about that. Yeah. But there's no. One thing that's absolute is he was not white. Oh, no. That's the one thing he wasn't. No. You know? Okay. I got some pictures right here. But pretty much pictures that was found in, uh, in, the, in the caves. In the caves, oh, nice. old tombs. And I got another one right here. But you can see. I'll let you get this one first. Yeah. This is Yahweh Shai. This would be Moses. This, oh, the Messiah teaching. Um, that would be Mary, Joseph, the Messiah, yeah. and the wise man. And even over here. You see, these were fine in the case. Yeah, y'all, y'all be, y'all be the Lord's chosen people. Like America teach you that we all created equal. That ain't true. The Lord said you'll be a special, to, a, a special people to me above all people. I mean, you even can the angels. It. You can feel it. Like, oh I, yeah, I tell them like our people historically like. From Africa and Native Americans, like we're spiritual people. Yep, we're Native Americans part people. of it too. Yeah, yeah. And I teach them that, like, and even if, even if I haven't learned some things, I know it in my heart. Yep, you can, it's you part can of feel you. Feel it. You can feel that spiritualness. <clears throat> yeah, I talk to my ancestors, and you feel that spiritual, and you can feel that others, others aren't. Uh -huh. Others aren't directed by the spirit. They're directed, like you said, by worldly means or whatever. But it's not, it's not that spirit that's directing them. You know. Yep. Yeah, I did a, a video, uh, pretty much, the, the, the white man already figured out who the two believers are. We got something called a God gene, uh -huh. and highly spiritual people, meaning us, uh -huh. we got a high expression of that God gene, yeah. while others don't. Yeah. And we got to watch out for that. I need to, I need to subscribe. I'm going to subscribe. Oh, yeah, here go. Uh, Look. This my, the YouTube top one is me. Okay. The bottom one is my bro in Houston. Okay. I got four channels up, because oh, they keep nice. getting... I had they like, keep shutting you down? Yeah, I had like 10 channels deleted already. That's crazy. So four got, three of them <clears throat> got bits and pieces. <clears throat> One of them going to save my official channel. Uh -huh. That's where I'm uploading all my stuff to. <clears throat> so yeah, and after Messiah, 
was black, that means his mother was black too. Yeah. So that means Mary looked more like all three of y'all. Yeah. Than you know than what they give us. Yeah. Uh, Moses, David. Um, they they keep a lot of these paintings overseas, uh -huh. like in Rome and Jerusalem, uh -huh. over there in the museum, uh -huh. and then people take pictures of them, which is how I got them, and I printed oh, them wow. off. You know, they will never show these in museums oh, wow. in America. Yeah. Oh, they're not gonna show that. They they want us to do a whole other narrative. Oh yeah. Even like if, even if as early as American history, they trying to change the narrative, and they have like. They're like uh, critical race theory, and that's not even. Oh, that's so that's annoying. Not, it's so annoying. You know what that is? And every time I tell somebody explain it, like people, well, I don't, not people are talking about Twitter and stuff. I get mad every now and then. I'm like, explain it. Oh, yeah, so yeah. against it, explain it. Uh -huh. They can't even explain what they're mad about. Excuse oh, they can't. It's, they can't. Is this mine? Yeah, that's yours. And really, that critical race theory, them trying to not teach us stuff in school, that's a criminal trying to hide the evidence. That's what it is. Because the white man, the white man on trial. That's oh, what it is. I gotta, since we keep talking about them, just like the people changed our names from what the Lord called us, uh -huh. um, the We're white here, uh, the white man changed everybody's name from the Bible that the Lord called them, because mm -hmm. like, you're not gonna find white or Caucasian either. Yeah. When you read the scriptures, the firstborn white man name was Esau. Uh -huh. And we know it was him, because it said when he was born, he came out red and hairy all over. Uh -huh. They the only red people that's why they call themselves rednecks. Yeah. That's why they got the term red devil. Yeah. But they don't got the term black devil. Yeah. And they're the caveman. That's why I said he was hairy all over. Yeah. And it said when he grew, he was a cunning hunter. What people like to hunt for sport. Yeah. They're the ones that got bear heads, deer heads, yes. a bear fur as a rug. Yeah. They hunt the animals just like yeah. they hunted us down. And that makes us, not like me, when I say it makes us nauseous. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Like, we're looking through Zillow, and, you know, it shows inside people's houses. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so, like, all that, like you said, like, the bear skin, all that stuff, and we all were like, ooh, and we turned See? that. Like, yep. we wanted, like, that house is, like, not even an option because of this, the, the, the uh, vibes. It, oh, yeah, they bring a spirit. That. Yeah. Because them animals died in fear, and that fear exists. Absolutely. And he don't care, and just like they hunt the animals, they hunt the Native Americans down. Yeah, like, they hunt the Mexicans, they hunt us down. Absolutely. In the city streets. And then yeah. they said uh, he liked venison. We know they get the day off from work to go hunt some deer and eat venison. Yeah. So all the all the characteristics of Esau shows that the white man goes back to him. Yeah. So when you see Esau, Edom, or Mount Seir in the scriptures, uh -huh. it's talking about him. And then Malachi 1 and 4, it said that the children of Edom was the border of wickedness. Uh -huh. So the Lord calls them the wicked by name. Uh -huh. So a lot of times we see the wicked... The wicked is not a broad term. It's talking about somebody. Yeah. And uh, and also they, they uh. They kind of change the narrative around though. Oh yeah. And the reason we know we the Lord's chosen people, because the Lord said you obey my commandments, I put these blessings on you. Uh -huh. But if you disobey me, I'm gonna put these curses on you. And the Lord, and uh, that's Deuteronomy the 28th chapter. Uh -huh. The Lord had a long list of curses. We the only people that's living out those curses. Yeah. Nobody else is. Like. Like verse 41 yeah. that was that was the very last curse like yeah. Deuteronomy 28 41 thou shall beget sons and daughters but thou shall not enjoy them for they shall go into captivity we the only people who our babies was taken from us yeah. and then Deuteronomy 28 68 the Lord said I will take you to Egypt again with ships Egypt means slavery yeah. and that new Egypt will be America that's why the pyramid on the back of the dollar uh -huh. and it says and there you should be sold into your enemies for buying men and buying women. So when we got to America, to this new Egypt, yeah. as soon as we got off the ship, we were sold. Yeah. And then, yeah, Native Americans, uh, Hispanics, and Negroes, we the only people that, that went into cap slavery on slave ships. Yeah. Um, so that's how we know we the Lord shows the people. And also the Lord is going to destroy America just like he destroyed Egypt. Um, yeah, and that's why we that's what that's what we see what's going on with this war. I heard that the cost was four hundred years. Is that true? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna, let me go to that real quick. Okay. I'm gonna read it for you. Hey, I need my water, baby. Right there, over there. Yeah, give me that. So Abraham, that would be like one of our great 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 grandfathers going way back. Uh -huh. And then in fifteen and nineteen, then he sent us to Abram. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. We strangers in a land that's not ours, which is America. Yeah. Like America's 
belonged to y'all first, but it got took from y'all. Yeah. So now y'all a stranger in y'all own land. Yeah. So me and you, we strangers in this land. Yeah. So know for surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs and shall serve them. And they should afflict them for a hundred years. So the people who would make us strangers in this land, we would serve them and they would afflict us, meaning they would cause us to suffer for a hundred years. That's why 2019, before the election, they started talking about black reparations yeah. and oh, African Americans been here 400 years. Yeah. The Lord had it put in politics to let us know, hey, time is about up. Yeah. But I then, remember. I remember when the uh, when the air was red and it was. Oh yeah. Red, and I told the kids, I said, I said, you feel that? I said, that's the answer. She's coming to help us, give us strength. It's oh yeah. From Africa. Oh yeah. Remember the the, the arrows red and it was coming from Africa. Uh huh. Like, like a couple years ago when coming all, the, when the, all the, the riots and things going on. Oh yeah. I told him. Uh huh. So that's the answer. She's coming to help us out. Uh huh. It is. And then we continue with this. It says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. So the people that we've been serving in His name for four hundred years, the Lord is going to judge them. Yeah. Christian church to make it seem like. The Lord is coming back to judge the wicked as a broad term. The Lord got his eyes set on the, on the specific people. Yeah. And uh, he's that's only coming to. Too, yep. Oh, oh, man. That's man, that's why all these people the getting shot up in these churches. Yeah. The Lord ain't dealing with them. It's, it's, it's such hypocrisy, man. And it's like, and it's crazy because they don't even like, okay, so I cuss. I, and, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So I cuss. And I'm like, it ain't even one of the, one, if you. Judging by your Bible, it's not even one of the seven deadly sins. It's not. Like, y'all, everything, the seven deadly sins, I see you guys do on a daily basis. You oh, that's what, what they saying? live by. Even, yeah, even even wrath. Like, I see them, the anger, anger, da, 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 that's wrath. Like, yep. you guys, you, you, in the, you, you breaking all the top seven mm -hmm. on a daily basis, and you mad I'm cussing, that's not even, and the, you know, there's nothing, like, I'm a spiritual person. Yes, I cuss, but I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah, spiritually, what you do, yeah. yeah. And as the scriptures say, uh, I think it was Paul, he said, I may be rude in speech, but not in knowledge. So, like, he don't got the best manners, I like that. but he got he got the spiritual yeah. knowledge. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to check you out for sure. I'm going to get these girls home so they hot and they're hungry. Oh, yeah, I may I really teach them, too? Oh, absolutely. I'm, a, I'm definitely, I, if you see Design by Plum follows you, that's me. Okay, do it. Design by Plum, that's me. And I don't have any videos or anything like that, but everything social media you can find me on Design by Plum because that's my business. I'm, I'm a marketer. Okay. Direct, yeah. Okay. I'm a marketing uh, director right now. Okay. I sort of, I sort of, I sort of know what that means. So like, you help other people advertise. Yeah. Like yeah. That? Yeah. Right mm -hmm. now, I work for um, for a CBD company, and I do oh. the marketing. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. uh, which company? Green Garden Gold. Green Garden it's it's Gold. in Carrollton. It was it was actually the first CBD company in Texas. I'm gonna check it out. And uh, yeah, so I do their marketing, but I've done marketing for all sorts of stuff, and I do like I used to like I was telling them in 2008 I I, I uh, was in charge of the Juneteenth Hip Hop Night. And I oh, that's right. Like, like the best night. Cause that's right. I saw it was packed. Like you couldn't see you see no grass. And uh -huh. anyway, so me and their dad, because their dad was an artist, and the dad actually did this come forth for a while, but um, yeah, we just we had it lit. But I've been doing some of everything for a while. Man, that's tight. Let me give you one more just in case maybe you got a family member okay. or a friend. But yeah, America going to be destroyed by fire. So we got to come back to the Lord right now. Okay. We know it's going to be destroyed by fire because we see what's going on with the war. Uh -huh. uh, Russia, they just made a deal with China and North Korea and the Middle East oh, wow. and India. Pretty I much all, our, all of America's enemies coming together. Yeah. And the Lord going to rain missiles on this place. Like like nowhere in the flood, but it's gonna yeah. be that's gonna be that fire and brimstone that get rained. I, I, that's crazy. I didn't know they all they, they all teamed up. Man, uh, subscribe. Sometimes they don't show all my subscriptions, but hit me with a comment. I'll give you a comment. Every question you got, the Bible got answers for it. Okay. And then I can send you this YouTube channel where I get my information concerning what's going on in the war. Okay. And it's, it's this white dude breaking it down. Uh -huh. So, do you know that's white on white drama? Yeah. So, you know, they got the scoop on what's going on. Yeah. Okay, and, thank you. What's your name again? Uh, Chris. Chris. Oh, uh -huh. thank you. Oh, nice, Monica. nice. Oh, nice to meet you, Monica. Nice to meet you. One more thing stay yeah. away from the microchip that's coming that they're going to try to put in everybody's hand. That's the, that's the MOB. Okay. And we got to stay away from that liquid that they're trying to mandate. You know what I mean when I say liquid? Yeah, 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 yeah. for that. 
But uh, we gotta stay away from that, even if they kick in the doors, because that's what they're gonna, that's what it's gonna come to eventually. Okay. So, um, you gotta die resisting it. But the, the scriptures say those who. You think, do you think Trump and Biden both flip? Is that your take or what? Oh, they, 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 two sides of the same coin. They're the same evil. Because okay. uh, Trump started the warp speed to make it, and then Biden pushed it out. So they, they don't even control nothing. They're just a puppet. Yeah, they a puppy. Yeah, they uh, but yeah, the Bible say we endure unto the death, we be given the crown of life. Uh -huh. But yeah, hit, yeah, hit me with every question. I'm gonna be waiting okay. on you. All right, thanks, Chris. I will definitely. All right, y'all take care. All right, you take care. Yes, man. Thank you. Call hello, Yahweh by Shimi Hawasai. All praises. That woman got it. And now that that's a so-called uh so-called Hispanic she was from Issachar. And she the one she the only one that's curious out here. All these Negroes, all the other Negroes out here, they just walking past me. But our people the most destroyed. All twelve tribes of Israel are lost, but the Negroes are the most lost. And she said she did a paper way back in school. She had honors classes. And she did a paper showing that the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, was, wasn't white. That he couldn't have been white. And she said that caused an uproar. And then she said even the teacher got in on it. Like the teacher was like, yes, he was white. Um, what else could he have been? And she was saying that, you know, they all in honors classes. She thought that they, they would have had a certain level of enlightenment right now that's why i say you got a worldly enlightenment you got a spiritual enlightenment you can be enlightened by the ways of the world or enlightened by the ways of the spirit the two-thirds they highly enlightened in the ways of the world that's why the lord said my people are wise to do evil but to do good they don't know how and what's to do good by what to do good by the spirit so our people are very wise when it comes to doing wickedness. But when it comes to the scriptures, to obey, to obeying the law, they, they, they suck at it. Now she said, you know, I forgot what she was talking about, but she said the uh, Hispanics and Native Americans. That, that's what the sign shows, the Hispanics and the Native Americans and the Negroes. We strangers in our own land. The white people trying to take over Africa. They done took over Israel, Jerusalem. And she get it. But our people can't get it. They think it's just good information. They say it about anything. They, they come talk to me. They say, oh, that's good information. They go talk to somebody that's under Muslim. They say, oh, that's good information. They talk to Esau and about his fake science. They say, oh, that's good information. To our people, everything is good information, but good information don't mean it's the right information. There's only one path or one doctrine that's right, and it's the, it's the Holy Scriptures. And that's our people. Everything is just good information. It's just entertainment to them. They say, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's an interesting take. No, this ain't nothing interesting. If your grandma, if, if, if if your family, if your family who you love so much, if they sick and the doctor tell you the truth, like, hey, he has cancer, you can't say that's an interesting, interesting take or that's good information. It's probably the truth. If they did know enough testing and they test was correct. We come up with the scriptures. This is the truth. So you can't say that's interesting information. You don't believe it. But the Lord going to make you believe it by death, by pain. And that's in the scriptures. But we're going to go back to Matthew 9, which I don't even think I got there anyway, but we're going to get there. That's why, again, our last call scripture, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. What did I get that lady? I gave her my YouTube channels. Because like I said before she came, you do most of your seeking of the Lord on the internet. So she's going to go and seek the Lord on the internet by all these teachings that the that the Lord that the men of the Lord has put together.
call ye upon him while he is near. You can't physically call upon the Lord, but you can call upon call upon the men of the Lord for questions, answers, and concerns. As I told her, hit me with every question. I'm going to be waiting on her. That's going to be her calling upon the Lord while he is there because we come in the name of the Lord. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And we don't answer questions with our own words. We answer questions with his word, with the scriptures. And this truth is a warning. And she's and she taking heed to the warning. That's why the thing I tried to left her off with, hey, America will go be destroyed by fire, these nuclear missiles. We got to get to the Lord while we can. These are the last call of scriptures. This time is short. The part, and like we say, be having road and blackouts. So somewhere, you know, you might be able to watch these videos, but somewhere right now, there is somebody without internet, without power. They're not able to access this truth. That means they're temporarily cut off from this warning. But eventually, we're going to be permanently cut off from the warning. During the blackout, that's when they're going to wipe the internet clean of this truth. And then when the power come back on, this truth ain't going to be on there. So that means the warning going to be up. The Lord going to get on with his judgments. And that's what we see going on with America, the Lord plague in this place. Um, two things that are worth mentioning off the top of my head. I still got to do a whole separate lesson on how this famine is building up. All the brothers pushing this famine. I got to get on it too, but gas prices is increasing. Diesel in Texas is $5. Diesel elsewhere in the world, in America, may be $7, maybe $10. Well, these truck drivers, they spending over $1,000 on a trip to the gas station. They're not going to be able to afford to keep truck driving. That means the store is going to go empty. That's why people can't get food, other household items first aid items because the truck drivers can't afford to deliver it so who else going to deliver it nobody so yeah uh the high gas prices that's a plague of egypt that's the plague that's a plague specifically designed for america to bring you americans to your knees what's the, what else is another plague that liquid injectable that they're trying to mandate all kind of people getting sick from that. Then what else? This LGBTQT, that's another plague. Everybody feel the need to swamp genders and like the same sex. What's another plague? People got all these mental illnesses, schizophrenia. They need all this uh, mental medication. People highly depressed, people anxious, people upset. The Lord is plaguing this place. He's destroying the system and destroying the minds of these people. So that as this country falls apart, the minds of you people going to fall apart. Because what you think was going on with Egypt when the Lord sent flies all over the land? When he sent frogs everywhere that stunk up the land? Then the frogs went and died in the water. So the water was no good. The water was turned to blood. The locusts ate up all the vegetation in the trees and the farmland, so there was no food. The Lord had a blackout in Egypt. That was the ninth plague. The ninth plague was the blackout. The tenth plague was the Passover. That was judgment. So right after the blackout, the judgment happened in America. Right after this blackout happens, you know, the power outage, judgment is coming. And that's why after the blackout, the Lord told Moses, I got one more plague I'm going to bring. So after the blackout, the Lord going to have one more plague. That's going to be his various forms of judgment by the death angels. So we was in Matthew 9. Let me jump back there. Well, I wasn't there yet, but that's what we're going over today. So Matthew chapter 9 verse 1, 
and he entered into a ship. And Yahweh Shai always entered into a ship. For those who've been following my lessons, this ship represents the ark that Noah was called to before the flood and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed. And Yahweh Shai, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemeth in Yahweh Shai, knowing their thoughts. Hey, and we often know the thoughts of our people. We can say a couple trick words that get people roused up. We can say the Lord and Savior, the Messiah, the Son of God is a black man. We can tell by the look on people's faces what they're thinking. We can say the Lord has a chosen people and he only coming to save his people. We already know what you people be thinking. And, that, and that's the spirit because when Yahweh Shai said these, he says, thy sins be forgiven thee. He knew that was going to arouse some people. So when the scribes, when they had that effed up, scrunched up look on their face, Yahweh Shai already knew he would th what they was thinking. That's why he says Yahweh Shai knew their thoughts because they face scrunched up when he said, thy sins be forgiven, like us. We could say, hey, we got pressure points we could hit people with, with the scriptures. It's going to F them up. We're going to already know what they're thinking by how they face look. The woman, everything that I was saying about this truth pertaining to us and we being the Lord's chosen people, the, one, the woman's face lit up with joy. And that's the characteristics of the one third. When we hear any bit of this truth, we light up with joy. When we hear America is falling, we light up with joy. When we hear that the white man is the wicked, we light up with joy because we always knew it. But the Lord made it official through the scriptures. When we hear that America is going to be destroyed by fire, we light up with joy. We don't love no parts of America. It was like the woman said, the 400 year curse. We've been afflicted in this land the whole time. People happy because they can go to McDonald's. They can celebrate Easter. They can go out to eat a bunch of nothing. And the food they eat ain't even real food. People excited they can do all that, but they gotta but they gotta go back to work Monday. They gotta go back to work Monday through Friday and probably Saturday. But they're happy that they can go out to eat and watch sports. Happy that they get a paycheck. Anybody who happy with any parts of America, you can be destroyed with America. We don't want nothing to do with this. I don't even want no money. I don't, want, I don't even want America's money. And that's why I'm ready for the blackout. It, a, because, they, because we ain't going to have to pay no bills no more. Which means I ain't going to have to work no more. Which means I ain't going to have to listen to Esau punk self no more. So yeah, people happy with all this stuff they can do with America, but they got to go to work. They got to wake up early. They got to answer to somebody. They sick. I got a cough from working at a, at a stupid, dust, dusty, nasty warehouse. I ain't, yeah. Well, let's continue with the scriptures. And you how I know in their thoughts said, wherefore you think evil in your hearts. So when we say something according to the scriptures, just like you how I said something, people faces scrunch up. That's evil in their heart. And that's what I told the lady when she was talking about how the Messiah couldn't have been white, that he was black. The people's faces scrunched up. I said, see, when you, when you tell people that the Messiah is so-called black, you see the evil and the hypocrisy in people. So wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether, for whether it's easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. Cause so Yahweh Shai said, you say, I'm speaking blasphemy, but, but what is it easier to say? Is it easier to say your sins has been forgiven or is it easier to say arise and walk? Because your sins being forgiven, that's nothing you see. You know, people say stuff all the time that they can't see. Like people say, somebody might say, hey, I got the most, people might say, people say, all the, people say stuff all the time that they can't show no physical proof. So Yahweh Shai saying, thy sins be forgiven. He can say it, but that don't mean he got physical proof to, to show it. But he said, is it easier to, to say your, your sins are forgiven or is it easier to say arise and walk? 
Because remember, going back up, this man had the palsy, probably cerebral palsy, so he couldn't walk. So Yahweh Shai saying, you know, is it easier to say that your sins are forgiven, or is it easier to tell this man who can't walk to get up and walk? It says, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. So the scribes had an effed up look on their face. Because Yahweh Shai said, thy sins be forgiven. But Yahweh Shai said, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. And Yahweh Shai saying, to show you that I got proof to forgive sins, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what Yahweh Shai did. Then he said to he that was sick of the palsy, arise, take up the bed, and go into thine house. And the man of the palsy, he arose and departed to his house. So Yahweh Shai said, So Yahweh Shai said, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. Because Yahweh Shai saw his faith. The scribes got mad, was thinking, How can this man forgive sins? But then Yahweh Shai said, So that you know that I, that the Son of Man, have power to forgive sins, I'm going to make this man who can't walk. I'm going to make him get up and walk. That's why it reads, Then he said to the man sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he, the man of the palsy, he arose and departed to his house. So the, so the, so the scribes doubted that Yahweh Shai had the power to forgive sins. Yahweh Shai said, I'm going to show you that I got the power to forgive sins by making this man walk that can't walk. And the Lord, the Lord tricked them. He said, which one is easier? To say, thy sins are forgiven or to say, arise and walk? It seemed like it would be easier just to say your sins are forgiven than to, than to make somebody walk that can't walk. But that was a trick question because Yahweh Shai could easily do both of them. Not only did he forgive his sins, he healed this man so that he could get up and walk. And he did. And that showed that he had power to forgive sins. And people like to not honor Yahweh Shai. Well, people say, I pray that the Heavenly Father forgive our sins. It's not Yahweh that's going to forgive your sins. It's Yahweh Shai that's going to forgive your sins. He's down, bro. Because Yahweh is through with the people. He only dealing with his son, Yahweh Shai. So we can only get to Yahweh through Yahweh Shai. So the Lord gave all power and jurisdiction to Yahweh Shai. That's why I think in the, in, in the book of John, he said, all power of heaven and earth was given unto me. So out of all the power, all the authority, and in heaven and earth, Yahweh Shai is in control. So Yahweh stepped, Yahweh done stepped back, letting Yahweh Shai run things on earth and in heaven. So it's going to be Yahweh Shai that forgive you for your sins. It's going to be Yahweh Shai that save you. If you're not forgiven of your sins, it's Yahweh Shai that didn't forgive you. And if, you, and if the Lord kill you in judgment, that's Yahweh Shai killing you. That's him having all power in heaven and earth. Then going back up, the Lord said, And Yahweh Shai seeing their faith, sent unto the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven. So this goes back to faith. You got to have faith in what you're asking for. For your house how to give it to you. You gotta ask for forgiveness and faith. You gotta ask to be healed in faith. And what happened first? The Lord said, Thy sins be forgiven. Then the Lord healed them. And, and your house, I was able to do both easily. And, and then he walked. After that, after the Lord forgave them. And, and that's what's going on today. We're not healing people physically, but we're healing them mentally. Because our people are sick-minded. They brainwashed by America. And when we heal the people, we're giving them the truth of who they are. And people being able to walk that wasn't able to walk before, meaning they wasn't able to walk according to the scriptures, they can now walk according to the scriptures once they've been healed mentally. <clears throat> and after the man got up and walked to his house, 
It reads, but when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified Yahweh, which had given such power unto men. Because, yeah, this is men plural. We got that power today. We got it in the spirit first because we able to heal people's spirits. But we're going to be given the power to physically heal people, physically do miracles. That's why Yahweh Shai later on says the, the works, the miracles I do or the works I do, you should do greater works than these because I go into the Father. And because Yahweh Shai goes to the Father, which is Yahweh, Yahweh Shai is going to give that same power unto men, which would be the man of the Lord, which would be the fishers that's fishing for the believers. So all the, all the, so all the men that you see today, we disciples. And what's the, what's the, what's the word disciple mean? Disciple mean a student. We students of Yahweh Shai being appointed by him to gather the lost sheep. And as Yahweh Shai passed from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of the custom. <clears throat> and he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. A hey, something simple was this scripture here. This ain't, the Lord didn't waste no space putting these words. Yahweh Shai called that man and said, follow him. And the, and the man rose and followed Yahweh Shai. The Lord called people physically and he followed him. In this generation, the Lord is calling us spiritually. And when he calls us, we follow him. How do you know the Lord is calling you? The Lord reveals to you the mysteries of the kingdom. He reveals to you the mysteries of the scriptures. He gives you, another, he gives you understanding so that you can dang there see it. That means the Lord is calling you. So if the Lord is calling you, you got to follow him. If the Lord is calling you, but you stay, but you stay put, and the Lord going to pass you. Because, and that's the spirit, because what does it say here? And Yahweh Shai passed forth from thence. When somebody passed, that means they passed him by. So the Lord <clears throat> giving you this understanding. He's showing you things in the spirit so that you can see it. That's the Lord passing by you. So when the Lord passing by you, that means he in sight. He is near to you in the spirit. So follow him. Because if you wait too long, if you stay put and you don't, you don't follow him, Yahweh Shai is going to pass by you. Now you're not going to be able to see him no more to follow him. Meaning that the Lord is going to stop giving you things to see so that you can't follow him in the spirit so while he is passing by while he's showing you things follow him don't stay put drop everything that's occupying your spirit and follow him meaning stop being obsessed with work stop being obsessed with your family stop being obsessed with your man or woman stop entertaining your friends and you know you know, isolate yourself so, so that you can um, take a deeper look at what the Lord is showing you so that you, so that you can actually follow him. Because, again, that's why it says in Yahweh Shai passed forth from thence. That means Yahweh Shai was walking. And while he was walking, he saw a man named Matthew. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, follow me. And then he arose and followed him. That Matthew arose and followed Yahweh Shai. Because to follow somebody, that means you following you following the leader. I mean, Yahweh Shai wasn't standing still. Yahweh Shai was walking because he was passing forth. So that means after the Lord calling you, you can't stay in the same spot that you're in right now because the Lord is moving. And after the Lord is moving, that means you need to be moving. And you need to be moving in the Lord's direction, which would be these scriptures. Because again, that's why it says, and he arose and followed him. Hey, meaning the Lord was leaving. The Lord passed by, and just as, just as quick as the Lord came, the Lord was leaving. So, if the Lord is showing you things, if you can understand this, if, you, if it makes sense to you, that's the Lord passing by you. Because you're able to understand it. But just like the Lord is, just as quickly as the Lord came to you, the Lord can leave from you. And you understanding this stuff, that means that the Holy Spirit is passing by. But just like the Lord is giving you the Holy Spirit, the Lord can take the Holy Spirit just as quick as he gave it. So this whole little verse says a lot. It's not just, oh, 
a man walked up and followed Yahweh's side. No, the Lord was calling him physically, and the man got up and followed. Just like the Lord is calling people spiritually today. And the one third, we arose and followed him. We got up off our butts and followed Yahweh's side. Don't mean that we got up from sitting off the couch. It's meaning the stuff that was weighing our mind down, that was weighing our spirits down. We dropped that mess and followed Yahweh's side. <clears throat> And it came to pass, as Yahweh Shai sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans, this word publicans, that's where we get the word republican from. The Roman Empire had publicans. This revised or this renewed Roman Empire, which is America, has republicans. And it's republicans because it's the renewed Roman Empire. So many publicans or republicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they sent it to his disciples. Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? <clears throat> so why your master eating with sinners? Why he eating with men that's part of the Roman government? But when Yahweh Shai heard that, he sent it to them. They that behold need not a physician, because Yahweh Shai is a physician. I'm going to do another lesson on that. <clears throat> That's why the Apocrypha, it says, the physician cut off a long disease. What's that long disease? It's that mental illness that we got, that we blind to the truth. And what's the cause of that mental illness? It's the cancer known as Esau. He the reason that our people sit in darkness in great confusion, not knowing who we are. Because Esau is the cancer to the earth. He's the cancer to the Lord's people. He's the cancer to the earth. The earth is sick. The Lord's people is sick. <clears throat> but not to go too far off, he said, They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. Who is they that are sick? That would be the sinners. That would be the publicans. That would be the people that answer to Esau, that made Esau their master, which would be us today. <clears throat> The one third, we sinners. Who would be the publicans? That would be the sellouts. The people who make Esau their master. Those are the people who need a physician. That physician being Yahweh Shai. So that's that's the Lord telling them, that's why I sit with sinners and sit with publicans. Because they need a physician. They that are sick. Not that not they that are whole. Whole meaning you healthy. You're not in need of anything. So the Lord didn't come. For the healthy, he came for the sick. <clears throat> and this is sick in your mind. Because you loving going to work, you loving another paycheck, that's sickness. Verse 13, but go ye and learn what that meaneth. <laughs> but but Yahweh Shai said, go learn what that means. And what, what, and what does it mean? I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Yeah, so the Lord said he will have mercy not sacrifice because mercy is for sinners the sinners need mercy to be forgiven and to be and to be forgiven that means you have no way to sacrifice for your sins so the lord said he's going to have mercy what is sacrifice for sacrifice would be for the so-called righteous because the righteous they could make atonement for their sins meaning they could make payment for their sins Meaning they can make a sacrifice, but they can be forgiven. But the Lord says he's not having sacrifice. He's having mercy. <clears throat> Meaning you can no longer make sacrifices for your sins. But the Lord is coming to bring mercy. So again, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. And the sinners will be the one that needs the mercy. While the righteous, you know, they will have to sacrifice, but you can't do sacrifice no more. That's why we continue. It reads, For I am not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. <clears throat> so again, the Lord said, I am not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Because with repentance, you get mercy. And when you call for repentance, that means you're not making a sacrifice. <clears throat> But in the time past, the righteous would make a sacrifice for their sins. But the Lord says he's not calling the righteous. 
meaning he's not calling for sacrifice. That's why it says, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Because the Lord is calling for, calling for the sinners to repentance, the Lord will have mercy. So the Lord didn't come for the so-called righteous. He didn't come for the righteous to make sacrifices to him. He came for repentance, to have mercy for repentance for the sinners. So that's the breakdown of this here. I'm going to say it one more time. Hopefully I can make it a little more clear. Um, the Lord didn't come for the righteous, so he didn't come for sacrifice. He came for the sinners, so he came to give mercy. And with that mercy, the sinners, the people who have no way to do sacrifice, can be called to repentance. And that's going to be our hour, you know, going live with this truth. Uh, Lord willing, it was edifying. I pray that that woman, you know, seeks the Lord and teaches her children. <clears throat> so they turning the music way up. So we're going to close out. Until next time, call her all your